20 million Wi-Fi hotspots and Counting Fun is one of the world's largest Wi-Fi service providers. And my guest today is CEO of Fun, Alex Herreger. Join us right after this message. All right, everybody, welcome back and welcome to another episode of Wi-Fi Now TV. My name is Klaus Hetting and this, of course, is the show that brings you all the stories and not least all the great people from across the Wi-Fi industry. And I'm excited today because my guest is Alex Pereger, CEO of Fawn. Fawn, one of the most visionary Wi-Fi companies out there. And they're doing lots of things, of course, with Wi-Fi hotspots, home spots, and so forth. Uh, lots of cool stuff. I'm going to get to Alex in just a moment. Before that, I want to make sure that you know that we're taking Wi-Fi now. The Expo and Conference to London, UK, this October 25 to 27. And we will also have, of course, the Wi-Fi Now Awards show happening at the same time. So if you're an outstanding Wi-Fi tech company or a service provider, check out Wi-Fi Now Awards uh, on our website. We have all the five categories that you can enter. And I strongly recommend that you do exactly that. Our event program and everything you can find at the URL wifinow.international. And if you have any questions, drop me a line at Klaus at Wi-Fi Now Events. So that's it for my shameless self-promotion for today. And I'm very happy to introduce uh, to all our viewers out there, Alex Pereger, CEO of Fun. Alex, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Klaus. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to see you again. So, Alex, uh, I want to start off uh, with, the, with the basic question uh, of you giving a short introduction to Fawn, uh, just so that our viewers know exactly what you're about. Absolutely. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thanks for uh, the introduction already of uh, us being a Wi-Fi visionary. We, uh, we like to see ourselves as such. Uh, Fawn is known for uh, you know, when you say describe fun, fun is known for two things, or fun is known for one thing, we do two things. So I'll explain that very briefly. Uh, we consider ourselves and we are uh, the innovator and the inventor of community Wi-Fi. We have the world's largest Wi-Fi network. We have now, as you said, 20 million hotspots uh, of people who share their Wi-Fi. Okay? And, uh, and we're quite proud of what we've achieved. We started 10 years ago uh, with uh, uh, the vision of creating a Wi-Fi network. We're now at a point where we say, I think vision on a good track. Um, but we didn't achieve that vision all by ourselves. Right? And that's probably the second thing that we do. We work with telcos, we work with carriers. And if you ask me, describe phone, I'd say we are on one hand, the world's largest Wi-Fi network, or on the other hand, working with carriers to help them to engage in Wi-Fi uh, and, and to basically provide them Wi-Fi services to our customers. So tell us a little bit about your work with carriers, because uh, as you said, and I consider you the, the inventor of the hotspot, uh, oh, sorry, the home spot concept myself as well. So, so you mentioned that. So, so what is it that you are uh, doing with the carriers? And I know you, you're, you've engaged many of the tier ones, in fact, and introduced, of course, the, the home spot concept all over the world. And, and it's now become nearly standard practice for a lot of tier ones. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, that's, I mean, I appreciate you say that. I think that's a dream come true, right? It becomes an idea, becomes into a product, becomes into a successful product and becomes something standardized. That's how I would see it as well. Uh, but the reality, though, is not like that. The reality is it's a bumpy way, okay? When we started 10 years ago with our vision, you know, the industry looked at us and said, these guys either are crazy or they're a bit too arrogant and you know they cannot rule the whole world and, and cr aggregate the whole Wi-Fi world together. Well, the reality is we never were uh, aspiring to do that ourselves. We always thought that the right way to create a community, the right way to make closed Wi-Fi into an open Wi-Fi and a managed Wi-Fi is to work together with telcos. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, hard piece of work because the first ones you have to convince uh, and once you have the first one, you can convince the second one and it, it goes on. So what we do with carriers is uh, Basically, starting from the community concept, uh, we realized that uh, the best way to roll it out is to get it with a carrier. And the first carrier to work together with was British Telecom at the time. And uh, what we did is we basically took the phone service of the community people, sh you share your Wi-Fi at home, you get access when you go to somebody else's Wi-Fi, and implemented that together with British Telecom. Uh, and that really had very positive results for British Telecom and for the community, uh, impact on churn, impact on, uh, on their core numbers. 
Um, and from there, we've evolved a lot. That's now, I'd say, six, seven, eight years ago that we started with that. Uh, British Telecom is the first one, still a, 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 a very important part of the, of the community, I'd say. But what we did is from that, we expanded the community. Uh, we expanded the network. We work with uh, British, we work with Vodafone, we work with Deutsche Telekom. Uh, we work in Japan with SoftBank, we work in Australia. Don't ask me how we, you know, we, we did an implementation in Australia, we did another one in South Africa, in, in Brazil. It's, it's what you say. It became something where okay, it works and it's easy to globally expand. Once you made it work in one market, you can expand it to other markets. Mm -hmm. so, so, right. So, Alex, tell us a little bit about what you think is the main challenge in building the kind of mass market uh, Wi Fi network that you've been busy now for many years building. Yeah, see, see I think that the challenge of, uh, of Wi Fi, okay, and, and then let's talk, if we talk, where do I think Wi Fi should be? I think Wi Fi should be something where you say it's an error access method. All of us are using Wi Fi, right? All of us are using Wi Fi at home, at the office. Uh, on the go, if you find a hotspot network like FOM or like uh, BT FOM, like one of those networks, and then every now and then in a cafe and every now and then in an airport, we all use it. The biggest challenge of massification and for it to become really a, a very useful service and for us to use it every day is seamless access. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that, that is a challenge I think that the whole industry faces. So it's not something that FOM faces. The whole industry faces, I think, the challenge of, you know, you want to make it very easy for your customers to access. And right now it's not, right? I think we're doing a good job in harmonizing it. We have 20 million hotspots. Well, I'm talking about, there should be 500 million hotspots on the planet and they should all connect easily to each other and should make it easy for customers to connect. I think that's the biggest challenge we have. Right, exactly. And, and which brings me to the next question, which is very relevant, I think, for what you, you, what you just described in that uh, you must also follow what Google's been doing uh, on Project Fi, and they also uh, recently released uh, what they call a Wi-Fi assistant to automatically connect to to hotspots. And they've been quoted as saying that they have access uh, to millions of hotspots in this manner and seamlessly as well. Do you think the time for services of this kind that have finally come and and as a follow-up question, do we have the technology? Do you have the technology to, to, to help make this happen? Uh, first, a disclosure, um, and you probably know <laughs> Google is a shareholder of uh, all that oh, is okay. not a very, a very uh, a great one. Okay, and, and why did they why did they become a shareholder in form? We also have Microsoft and um, and uh, British Telecom, Deutsche Telekom, and some venture capital. So we we group together people uh, very different kinds of of of, of parties on, on our uh, shareholders. Uh, what do I think, uh, I mean, I think it's great that Google is doing this. I think it's a must too. I mean, it's, it's now open hotspots are open for a reason, right? Um, now we, they're open for the reason that we all should be able, or guests should be able to connect to those. No, what Google has done and what Google is doing is they're basically facilitating the process of connecting to this. I think it's a, it's the other question that you have, is it the time for services like this to, to arise? And, and maybe the question implies, is it the time for OTTs to actually take an active role in, in helping with that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely do think so. Okay? And I do think it's a symbiotic um, uh, uh, undertaking. I don't think this is Google against operators. I don't think this is Google against um, anybody who's providing Wi-Fi services. I think it's just, a, you know, just make it easier to connect. Okay? There's some hotspots that are open, some hotspots that are paid, other hotspots that might require you to watch a video, whatever there is. We need to consolidate it, work together to make it seamless. Now we have things as well on our side, obviously Google has an operating system that makes it easier. We have things on our side to make the connectivity very easy as well. So Alex, uh, you have been very active as fun, especially over the last couple of years, I think, in, uh, in emerging markets, right? So what do you think is driving this? And how do you see the future for Wi-Fi in emerging markets? Yeah. I mean, we started really in, uh, in Europe, right? And I, that's, I wouldn't consider that as, um, uh, you know, as, as what I'm going to answer in the second part of the <laughs> answer. Uh, that's not really emerging market. We started here for an obvious reason. There's a lot of broadband. There's a lot of Wi-Fi. Uh, 
we in the last years uh, expanded a lot in other markets that we could consider emerging markets. I wouldn't say those are the emerging markets very often referred to in the financial markets or financial terms. Those, I would consider those semi-emerging markets, okay? Brazil, South Africa, uh, we do some things in, in, in Southeast Asia, okay? Uh, those are markets, and the challenge in those markets, and it's even worse in, in markets where you, like Africa, is that there's less broadband available. So the value of Wi-Fi is a lot higher, right? Whereas in Europe, it's like everybody has broadband at home, literally everybody or almost everybody. Everybody has Wi-Fi at home. So the challenge is to federate it and make it easily accessible. In other markets uh, where there's less broadband, take like India, take like Brazil, but, but other Latin American markets even more so, take like Africa, Wi-Fi very often is the only way to get access to the internet. What these markets have in common with Europe is that they use the same mobile phones. <laughs> they go at the same Facebook pages, they go at the same internet content. So the challenge there is actually one of a much larger value even. And what we do in Wi-Fi there and, and, and how we engage there is actually we, we have different business models. So we take yep. a very simple example is one of micro entrepreneurs, right? It's very expensive for an Indian to buy a broadband line. Okay, so you take the broadband line and you resell capacity to other people so you can finance this. It's a win-win situation for the operator because they sell broadband lines that before that person couldn't afford. Win for the, the micro entrepreneur who runs maybe a, a grocery store and win for the consumer who otherwise couldn't afford to get into the internet. So the difference there is different business models. I think Wi-Fi will, will especially in these markets, grow very much. For us, we see the growth market uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. So let's talk a little bit about the market for SMB, small medium business managed Wi-Fi. And I know you have some activities there. You have some fairly new products in that space. Uh, the idea, of course, is uh, presumably to give something back to the venues that they can use when they offer free Wi-Fi to the clients, but also their visitors, but also in the other directions that the venues get a specific benefit from this. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing in that space? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Look, we're not the only ones. I think there's a, there's, there's a whole breed of a lot of companies trying to solve the question of, you know, small and medium businesses are offering Wi-Fi to the guests the same way as they offer air condition, right? It's a must, right? And you find the funniest scenarios, you write it somewhere on the board or they give you a piece of paper, they write it on the back of the napkin, the password, I mean, sometimes they leave it open. It's, it's a challenge. That's why there's so many companies trying to solve it. Um, I think we're also, we, you were in the industry, I'm in the industry, we're sometimes overrating a little bit uh, desire for every shop owner to know the statistics, okay? We do that. It is important. It's hard to say that a shop owner would look at the statistics of Wi-Fi to sell more coffee. I have my doubts about that. I think there is a market for that, but I, I have a sincere, very strong belief. I think every single shop will offer Wi-Fi to their guests. Every single dentists will offer Wi-Fi to their guests. And I think it's, a, it's a, not just a business opportunity, there's almost an obligation for service providers to offer that, right? So if you wanna peek into our strategies, our strategy is very much enable the ones who sell the broadband line to enable those in a very easy way to provide guest Wi-Fi in a simple way to, 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 to their guests. Right? And it should just come as part of your broadband subscription. We do have some deployments on that, on that side. Okay, we work with some of our operators already. Vodafone Spain is the first one that I can publicly announce. We are uh, deploying our merchant Wi-Fi product. Uh, I think functionality is very important. I think distribution for success is equally important. And I think, um, I think you will see probably a lot of deployments there. Do we get back to the oh, shop owner? Absolutely, we give statistics, we give all those things, but we find different levels of interest depending on the, on the sophistication, I would say, of the shop. So Alex, you guys have come a long way uh, in your, what, seven, eight years is it now? Eight years? Well, uh, we actually celebrated our 10th anniversary. Oh, you, your 10th anniversary, well, congratulations. I, I don't think I, I well, think no, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> no, no, actually, what we do for some of our employees who have been here for 10 years now, they get a pen as a, you know, like a proper company does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, no, so we're still a startup. So we, we, we still have a startup culture. We still have a, you know, we still consider ourselves as a startup. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 years, we've pivoted it a couple of times. Uh, we've made some um, changes, but I would not say we hold on to one thing very strongly, which is Wi-Fi 
and get Wi-Fi to the masses. Right? That's our, our mission and that's how we're doing it. Oh, you're preaching to the converted, as they say. This is all I'm trying to do from my little office here. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, but you're doing extremely well with it. Anyway, that's really good. I wanted to ask you actually one more, one last question. What's the next big thing for you if there is such a thing? Great question. Uh, there is, you know what, there's probably not one big uh, thing that I could share with you right now. Uh, even if it was in the pipeline, I probably wouldn't uh, disclose it here without. No, there's, 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 I would say there's a series of small steps. Uh, for the industry and for ourselves, probably the biggest step that we're going through right now is uh, really the transition and the communication towards the market that we're not only doing community Wi-Fi. We are offering to Telcos technology that they can run Wi-Fi services. Mm -hmm. That goes community, which is obviously our stronghold. Right? It's mm -hmm. obviously where we come for small and medium business. There is solutions that we can empower municipalities. We've run, we run a municipality network where you configure different user experience for 20,000 hotspots. So it, it is a wide array. That on one hand. On the other hand, we still consider our task to be aggregating a lot of networks. 20 million right now counts that we'll have 30, 40 million relatively soon. We're, we're not giving up on that mission. And I think it can go into the 100 millions and we, we're trying and we're working hard. Mm -hmm. Alex, I do want to ask you about one last thing, actually. One additional question, because I, 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 I actually sent you that little notice from the EU yesterday, <laughs> uh, which said, and of course, this, is not, uh, this has not been approved yet, but it is a part of the uh, EU's plan, at least, to offer free Wi-Fi, I think they say, to six to 8,000 communities in Europe, and they want to invest, 100, I think the figure was 120 20 million euros in in doing that uh what do you think of that plan i personally love it i am hoping that it's going to go ahead well i think it's great i mean let, let, let's be it's 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 maybe not the most expected move okay i didn't expect that the european uh, commission is going to come up with 120 million euros to run something i really like because i read the notice as well i really like that they say it should be in a way that it's ultra fast should be in a way that it doesn't undermine existing businesses. And I think that is very important because I don't think it's the task of an authority to undermine disrupt existing business. There's mm -hmm. ISPs that do business. There's work, Wi-Fi service providers that do business. There's other companies. I think it's great. And I do think, I mean, look, I have no doubt that every single municipality will have Wi-Fi. You know, we run around and play Pokemon. I have two kids. I play Pokemon all the time. Pokemon Go all the time. Oh, I run out of my data plan in no time. Okay. I you know, I think we'll run around for data, but we'll also run around for information, okay? So all these hotspots for municipalities will be digital billboards, right? For whatever you want to make it. So I think the initiative is great. Let's, I hope the, the implementation is uh, not too pragmatic. Um, honestly, I think, uh, I think a lot of companies should actually engage in that. And we, but we'll work with companies on that. What we're not trying to do, we're not trying, we will definitely, you know, our technology can be a part of that. We'll definitely try to help companies if they come with business ideas and they, you know, we're more than happy to go together to that. I think there's, there's kind of a great opportunity. Also, right. I also think it's fantastic and, and uh, fingers crossed that this will go through and get passed by the various legislative bodies and so forth. Uh, so um, I want to thank you a bunch, uh, Alex, for coming on the show. It's been delightful to have you here and we want to get you back uh, and hopefully with uh, some more great news and great announcements from Fun. Great to have you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Great to be here with you. Thanks. All right, folks, that's it for today. Don't forget uh, to go to Wi-Fi Now International. They re register for a London conference. Fawn, by the way, will be there, not Alex, but another great person from Fawn. And uh, that's it. I'll see you next week for another episode. And uh, thank you for watching. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.